How does it feel like to shoot the most expensive camera in the world? Let's find out. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about the Hasselblad H3. You guys voted on Instagram to see this camera, to hear about this camera and well, here's the video. You might have seen my Road to Leica video where I'm talking about the Leica M8 and the Kodak CCD sensor and back then when I was so excited about the M8 colors I searched the internet for other options and other uh, Kodak CCD equipped cameras and I found out that um, Kodak didn't only make sensors for the Leica M8 and M9 but also for the Hasselblad H series in medium format. Well, this is a professional grade camera. This is a true professional's camera. That means you have no JPEG output, you have no JPEG options, it shoots only raw and it's usable, only usable at certain situations like studio work or when you're using flash or something. Um, it's not the standard camera you take out with your family and take uh, pictures with it like I mostly would like to do with it. So, well, who is this camera for? Who uses such a camera? Uh, for instance, uh, Karl Lagerfeld had one, Annie Leibovitz has one or had one, I don't know, I, I guess she's uh, shooting with something more modern, with something newer today but she's um, often seen with uh, a Hasselblad H series in her hands. This is a camera from 2006. This is an 18 year old camera and the most special thing about it is the sensor size. It's even today, 18 years later, the biggest digital sensor you can buy. The other uh, medium format models from um, Hasselblad or the Fuji GFX like I use for my professional work um, have a so-called crop medium format sensor. This is true to the 6x45 analog film and it has the same look, it has the same feeling as film and with the Kodak CCD sensor it got that grain and that structure in the pictures that is just awesome. This is crazy. Yeah, let's look at the camera. The Hasselblad H system is a completely modular camera. That means you can replace every single part of this camera with um, the parts you need for a certain shooting. There is a little display that you can light up just like your 80s, 90s Casio watch. <laughs> And with your basic shooting information, you have um, the removable uh, viewfinder with a little flash in here. Um, one thing that's important about the flash, um, as you can see, it's tiny, and especially for this big ass camera. Um, this flash is mostly used to trigger the other flashes in, uh, in the studio work. So um, this is not a real flash to, to use on certain dark situation or something. On the left hand side you have your flash sync in and out. There is an accessory shoe here too. And um, Underneath this little thing here, there's a port for some um, special Hasselblad stuff you can put on the camera. I don't know exactly what it is. Here is a port for tethering, which uh, on these cameras is the standard way to use them. And the funniest thing about this, this camera is that there is a little vent here. So when this camera works, you can hear it. So I'll put it on the mic. And yeah, that's my only camera that sounds like a hovercraft when I'm using it. And it's great when it's cold outside and you're using this camera, this will blow warm air into your face so you don't get cold. The back display is by far the crappiest display and the dirtiest I've ever seen. It's uh, fairly unusable. You have some basic information in here. So, for instance, um, 
this is how it doesn't work. Um, well, you can see your shooting information. You can theoretically review your pictures, the pictures you took, but they look like a... It reminds me more of a, I don't know, 90s Game Boy or something on a Super Nintendo, but not like a camera. I mean, it's an 18-year-old display and this camera must have had a very rough life because um, if you see the marks here, um, it has been used and it's okay. Um, I hardly use the back display on any of my cameras, so to me this is not a deal breaker and I can live with that. Let's disassemble this camera. First things first, the obvious things, you can remove the lens. Then, the viewfinder, it's a little button up here, and voila. This is the view. view <laughs> this is the viewfinder, and the grip is the the battery at the same time. And yeah, it lasts for a while. I don't know. I never really <laughs> used it that much. Well, and last but not least, here is the sensor. This is the Kodak CCD full frame, full, uh, non-cropped, medium format sensor in its full glory. Wow, this is so amazing. Looks boring, but um, this is the camera. <laughs> this tiny thing here, it's just a mirror box and it's a brain, so to speak. And well, that's all. On this particular model, there is uh, the Hasselblad H3 and H32. And on the first model, you can mount an analog back on it, so you can, so you're also able to shoot film with it. And this was my initial idea of buy, buying this camera to, to have a camera that I can both use for digital and analog work by just changing the back. But uh, the bags are as expensive as the camera itself so today uh, I looked it up a few minutes ago you can get your hands on a Hasselblad H series the one two or three that are compatible with the uh, digital uh, analog bags for around two to three thousand euros um, if you're lucky there is a lens within and the 80 millimeter uh, 2.8 lens um, it's uh, for a medium format lens, it's uh, quite small. You can get this one for around, um, I guess, uh, four to 500 euros. And to be honest, it's one of the greatest lenses I've ever used. I am working with the Fujifilm GFX system with the 5517 and the 53.5 and they're great lenses but uh, this one is by far the best nifty 50 lens i've ever used and what most people don't know is that uh, this camera and especially the h lenses are developed by fujinon by fujifilm so initially this is a Fujifilm camera and I don't know exactly what happened but um, Hasselblad used to work with Fujifilm on a lot of projects. For instance the Hasselblad X-Pan is uh, originally a Fujifilm TX1 and just was rebranded by Hasselblad for the X-Pan name and uh, we all know Fujifilm and we love Fujifilm maybe. Um, but uh, Hasselblad has this, uh, this um, exclusiveness and this uh, special name. So I think it's much cooler to say I'm, I'm shooting with a Hasselblad than I'm shooting with a Fujifilm. So, but no matter what it's written on it, it's a Fujifilm lens and it's awesome. Like nearly every Fujifilm lens, I, Fujinon lens I ever got. Conclusion. 
Who is this vacuum cleaner for? Well, this is an enthusiast's camera. You have to slow down, not in the way everyone is talking about, oh, you have to slow down when you're shooting film, no, no. The autofocus is slower than anything you've seen. It's slow, it's loud, and the camera only goes up to uh, 1 800 of, uh, of shutter speed, and uh, the ISO performance is, you can use it at, at ISO 50, or 100 or if you're very brave you can try it at 200 but that's all um, I think it goes up to 800 but uh, around 400 you have very aggressive gra grain that uh, just don't looks great and the brightest aperture you can get is uh, 2.8 so you are very limited in the kind of photos you can take with this camera so like I said before um, it's a camera designed for studio work and if you're working on a studio with bright flashes and you like to use flash for instance I I hate flash I never use flash on my pictures but if you use flash this is the perfect camera for you you can take high-grade professional pictures that are even better than any of today's uh, standard full-frame cameras well um, the files and colors the Hasselblad CCD sensor or the Kodak CCD sensor in the Hasselblad H3 uh, delivers are just mind-blowing. It's the, the these are the most beautiful colors I've ever seen out of a camera. Even better than the Leica M8. Sorry. <laughs> like you have seen, it's a huge camera might be a benefit because if you use it for one day your muscles might be growing or something I don't know but um, it's not the camera you can take with you you can put on a strap and hang around your neck and just to walk around with your family it doesn't work out with the camera that big um, it's heavy it's about 2.1 kilos of uh, yeah, big camera and it would be an option if I could afford the analog back for it. So I would have uh, both analog and digital on one camera. This would be my camera for nearly everything. Because on film you can go much higher. You maybe use something with a 3200 ISO or an, I don't know, Porter 800 or something. You can go much higher in the ISO performance it, that uh, then you can go with the digital sensor and that's okay that would be a compromise but um, it's difficult to use three positive things about this camera first things first the colors these are the best colors I've ever seen out of any camera like I said uh, the second thing is the experience you have a huge uh, optical viewfinder it's the biggest optical viewfinder you can get on any camera and on any digital camera, sorry. And last but not least, what I deeply love is the sound of this camera and it just sounds amazing. Let me show you. Isn't that great? So that's it. Um, this was my hustle blood review and hands on. I hope you like it. Tell me your opinion in the comments. I'd like to know. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. And well, thank you and till next time. Bye guys.